that new wheel. Hey, who's in the do trip? And we're live. Welcome to Bet Records, where we talk about hot topics, ideas, and all the shit you really want to hear. Welcome to this episode of Bet Records. My name is Justin Catanazzo, and I'm alongside two of our co-hosts, Trenton and Quentin. Here we are. Hey, what's up? If you guys you guys couldn't tell, but just before this, we uh, looked like a bunch of cavemen trying to figure out how to get this thing trying going. Trying to figure out technology. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, Josh the, the is homo not, left. Josh is not <laughs> in attendance tonight, so it was definitely a struggle to get it going, but at the end of the day... We pulled through. We yeah. did it. So. It's like uh, when you hand a monkey a coloring book with no crayons, and it's like, hey, do this. How, 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 how is he supposed to know how to color in between the yeah, lines the, with the, no crayons? The homo didn't leave us directions, man. What the hell? How are we supposed to operate the podcast without the homo? We were locked out of the house. No homo. We, we were locked out of the computer. For a second, I thought you said something else, Quentin. I said homo. The homeowner. Uh, I thought you said homo. I was like, what? The homo? Talking? Yeah, it's for short. Yeah, yeah. it's short. short. <clears throat> homo is right. short for a uh, for homer, dude. Besides the point. Um, <laughs> so, we got some big news in um, the justice system coming out of California. Sirhan Sirhan, the assassin of Robert F. Kennedy, has now been granted parole. Oh, yeah. Although this is... <clears throat> so, how it works in California is now there's a 90-day period to review the parole hearing and it has to go to Governor Newsom's desk and he has to sign off on it for final approval. And just a little background, Sirhan Sirhan was sentenced in 1968 to death for the assassination of Robert Kennedy after winning the California primary during the 1966 presidential election. Mm. And he was given the death sentence, but then in 1971, it was turned into life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Ma'am. But to this day, he's had 16 parole hearings, and this one finally panned out for him. Damn. He has been in jail since 1968, so that's 53 years. Yeah. How old is he now? He's got to be like 90. 77. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So partially why I went through that was because like the two sons of Robert Kennedy, they signed off on the parole, correct? Like that's part of what what affected the hearing and what made it so successful is that actual family signed off like on the agreement to let him go. And it wasn't even Damn. it wasn't even that too. The prosecutors didn't even show up. That's true. Yeah. That's <laughs> another reason for it. Well, I mean, he's tried to do it what 19 times? Did you say? Yeah. Why? How can they even reverse it if it was no parole? I mean, and why is he? Why did he even try nineteen times? Obviously, it's worth it. You know what I mean? I, and I, yeah. I get you want to get out, but how does it, that work to reverse it like that? Even? I think it was after they said life and parole without the possibility of parole. There was a mental health evaluation of Sirhan Sirhan, mm. and according to their findings, Sirhan has no memory of killing Robert Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, so he was declared insane to my knowledge, so the yeah. parole yeah. thing was taken away. Hmm. But that still doesn't... He's been in prison for 53 years. Right, yeah. So yeah. I guess the biggest question that the prosecutors or the defendants were arguing for him to be paroled was, is he really still a danger to society? Yeah. No, it makes sense, yeah. I'm sure, but, yeah, it's just an old dude who... Uh, uh, probably not even really gonna go out and do anything. He's probably just gonna sit around for this. That's kind of was my question too. Like, wh- I mean, no one, no one would hire him. You know, unfortunately for him, but for probably good reason, I would think. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's probably someone. I don't know. He'll probably get something going on for his life. But uh, I don't know. At uh, seventy something, I for just, being in under behind bars for fifty some years. Yeah, I, I don't know what the outcome is there. So when that news broke, I was actually at work, just scrolling on my phone, and all of a sudden I got a news update: RFK's assassin has been granted parole. I like eyebrows went up, <laughs> my jaw dropped, but nobody could see it because I had a mask on. And <laughs> I was like, "What the? Dang. Like, could you imagine if John Wilkes Booth survived and he eventually got parole for right. killing Abe Lincoln? <laughs> right? Yeah." No, yeah, definitely. Right yeah, but then really again, that was a sitting president at the time. It, yeah, that's a little more different. Robert too. Kennedy wasn't a president. He was just He's running for Kennedy. president. Yeah, not and really. so it's very funny. When I look back at the, at the 19... 
at the 1968 Democratic Party presidential primaries, Kennedy's um, campaign, he ended up winning four states. And back then, there were a vast majority of the country didn't participate in those primaries. Mm -hmm. So Hmm. there's a high possibility that if he was never assassinated, he would have won because he ended up losing... Let's see. He ended up losing the primary to to Hubert Humphrey from Minnesota. Or wait, was it? Yep, it was Hubert Humphrey out of Minnesota, but... That's yeah. a little weird because it says here Humphrey only got didn't even win a state. Hmm. But anyway, like so Kennedy got 2.3 million votes at the time of his untimely death. Yep. And it was a very high possibility that he was going to he was going to win that primary. Was he so did he get killed during the like the you know the race per was, se or what? He was killed at after his acceptance speech for taking the state of California, oh. he was hmm. in California and was assassinated at the hotel right after he gave a victory speech, and he was on to Chicago to take Illinois, Damn. and he was assassinated. Damn. Okay. That shit. Kennedy, the Kennedy family has had a lot of bad voodoo yeah. stirring up ever since their <laughs> beginning. You know, the sixties in general were just a really bad time. Definitely like a time of like realizing that we needed better security for like important public figures. You know, you had MLK, you had JFK, you had RFK. You know, you had multiple assassinations and just well, it's, everyone it's, ends with K. Well, in a single <laughs> decade, you know, it's true. Well, what I found very peculiar about John F. Kennedy's assassination was. That the whole reason he was assassinated was because he chose to ride in a motorcade without a top on it, and he yeah, well, requested it, because yeah. he he basically signed his death warrant with that. You're yeah. a president in an open motorcade. I guess I guess he just felt like that it wasn't worth like trying to show some sort of form of vulnerability. I don't know. I don't really know what was going through his head, but something like that. It's just it was just well, a precau- what was going through his head was a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a precaution that we just don't allow like anymore. Really, you know what I mean? Or like if we're gonna like do something like that, we we, we scope out the area hard. You know, we know who's in the area, who's in the building, so just do like that. Yeah. yeah. Those Secret Service officers know how to. Yeah, the Secret Service has come a long way, obviously. Like, have you ever seen um, the presidential motorcade now, The Beast? No, what? No. Yeah. What is it? It's called The Beast. It's a Cadillac. um, I forget the name of the Cadillac. Oh, it's a car, okay. The security features that are on it. Mm -hmm. It's. It's encased in, like, a steel chamber that if there's. Like chemical warfare, nothing Jesus. can get into the cabinet. To yeah, hurt the president. Yeah, I'm sure that's reinforced. Like, if there's a crash, it would be like you know less severe. Yep. Obviously, it's bulletproof gra- glass. I'm sure. You know, like oh that. yeah, I definitely and, assume so. <laughs> and also because of that capsule that can protect you from chemical warfare, it can also mm. protect you from a landmine. If you drive nice. over a landmine, it won't up. penetrate the cabinet. Oh, Interesting. It's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Did you guys ever go, because you guys are both from the East Coast, did you guys ever go to the White House and go in it, or no? No, I'm not no. yet. I my, like my dad said uh, that he could get it arranged, because... Yep. You have to talk to your uh, senator, I yep. believe, your state senator. Me and my family went. Um, it's either senator or governor, it's... Or I think it's congressperson. It's, yeah, I think that's what, your representative, yeah, your state's representative, actually, in Congress, I believe that is correct. Um, but, uh, yeah, our family got permission from can't remember the lady's name to go and get tickets because you have to reserve a spot and a date and stuff like that but yeah, so it was kind of nuts you have to wait outside the fence gate and then you have to wait in another line you have yeah. to walk through a building and then out of it and then you walk in another little like yeah, shed thing they're little sheds they have dogs behind a cage so you can't yeah. see them but they're drug dogs with little vents and a fan Jesus. the fan blows like this air your smell per se yeah into this little vent and all the dogs are chilling back there and whatever and then they make sounds or something if that's something's crazy. there yeah, that's nuts. yeah um we obviously never saw nothing but um, once you were inside it was pretty much like just go walk around you know it was roped off so you had to stay you know within four feet wide you know and kind of walk through but uh and most of it was just open and there was a member of the white house in every room of course, just standing there surveying in case sure. um, they're there for quote unquote questions, but we know they're really there in case you try something quick, you know. Who was who was sitting president when you went? 
Trump was, daddy. Was it, was it Donald Trump? Yes, sir. Wow. Yep. That's, uh, was he there? <laughs> no, he was not um, actually at the White House. He had some. He had something overseas. I remember it was. I don't know how long ago it was already. It was at least three years ago, so it's I very... don't remember. But he was away somewhere doing something. Um, they most of the time don't even tell you actually if it was, but it was announced on his Twitter yeah. or someone's. He was meeting with some. I it's don't know. But... very rare to take a White House tour and the president's actually in the White House. Yes. There was, yeah, I would think there was like once that. or twice when Obama was in there that he was there, but he didn't tell anybody. Yeah, the guests yeah, would just walk sure into the room and they'd just be standing there. there. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. That would be something to tour. That would be a yep. hell of a place to live. It is really yeah. cool, you know. Really cool. Um, and you guys have been to, have you guys been to D.C. and done, like, the museums and <laughs> shit? Or no? Oh, yeah, oh, many yeah. times. Yeah, because um, I love, like, old history shit like that, too. I, yeah. yeah, I really do as this well. This had, like, a hint of that, but it's like the fucking White House, dude. Like, I took a selfie in front of the White House steps. The end of the tour is, like, the front lawn of the White House and the yeah. steps and stuff, you know. Um you walk throughout everything, and you kind of te- take a peek in the movie theater room and these different <laughs> rooms and whatnot. You know, um, it was it was really cool, actually. But yeah, no, it's an experience to have for sure. Something I would want to do eventually. Yeah. Man. Yep. One place I've always wanted to check out was the Pentagon. Yeah, the Pentagon. I drove by that's it, but that's about it. Yeah, it's what is it? The biggest building in the world with the most offices? Is oh, it? I have no idea. Maybe yeah. It, it's huge. I know it's yeah. It's a monster. But I didn't know that. Um, I don't. Even, I doubt you can even get tours of it. That wouldn't oh, even no, make sense. You can. You can. Yeah. Sure. Really? Very I was limited parts, but yeah. I, I was suppose. Watched, yeah. I was watching a video on. Not of the underground layer, but the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> and there was, in a segment where one of the tour guides at the Pentagon, like, she explains what. The tours are like. Interesting. Okay. And she says the most difficult part about the job and qualified, is that. For every tour, she walks three to four miles backwards. Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. Yep. And that's she tough. she can't even look over her shoulder. She has to like Watch run through that so many times, mm. know where everything's at. So state your facts and everything, not even look and say, okay, now here's this. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, we Because when we did one of um, the Capitol building, even two in D.C., we did that. Um, and went through the different buildings and stuff. Um, was it George Washington's tomb that's in the middle of, um, fuck, is it, it's not, it, um, what's the, what's the Capitol building called, um, uh, in D.C.? Um, uh, like the House, Senate, the whole, the whole building. I can't think of what it's called I, now. No, sure. there's nobody buried there. Um, George Washington's buried in Mount Vernon. Yes, so yeah, but, he... Yeah, yeah, there's the Lincoln Memorial. Yes. You know, like the yep. statue. Yeah, 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 yeah that's buried like, there. No, no, no. So Washington was supposed to be... Yeah, I, I might have to look this up later, there's, but he is. I was at Mount Vernon as well. I've seen that, been there, done that, definitely. Yeah, there's um, only... There was a plan, and there was a tomb. It was a circle made in the middle of the building. I believe it was for Washington, and he wanted his body to be at his home, you know, his farm and his land and stuff like that, yeah. so that's why they did that, because, Mount Vernon stuff. But because, there was a plan to put a tomb in the bottom of it. <laughs> because you know there's only one president buried in Washington, D.C., like oh, the actual yeah. district. Oh. Who is it? Woodrow Wilson. He's buried in the Na- National Cathedral. Nice. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. Okay. But people also say like, oh, Kennedy Taft, they're buried at Arlington. That's in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yep. I did do that. Did you go there as well? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is really... Oh, yeah. yeah. We've my talked da- about that before. Well, my dad... The soldier. Yeah. Well, my dad lived in Arlington. There would just be days where he'd be at work. I would just say, drop me off. I want to walk around there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I would... S- I love the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Yep. It's a very peaceful place. Um, but you need to be respectful or yeah. you will get yelled at by the guards. And oh, yeah, sure. when you're put on the spot by them, yeah. Yep. Yeah, fuck. That's pretty sus. I just, I find it interesting that the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, those soldiers were World War Two soldiers. And to this day, there's still no verification. They remain John Doe's. I mean, it's really, probably really hard to find. I'm sure if it was found, it wouldn't have been found by now, you know. I don't think it would ever be found. Or is the question, do they even want to know their real identity, or we just want to keep them as the unknown soldiers? I mean, yeah, well, now it's more of, like, a mythic-like thing, you know, so it's kind of, it would be kind of weird to find their names, you know? Yeah, I would say now it's more of a... Like a mytho- like, more of like a mythological... mythological I would, yeah, figure, you know? for lack of a better term, I'd say, like, a statement, or, like, a memory of everyone that has served yeah, like that goes mythology, unremembered. Like American mythology, you know? Yeah. My biggest question... About, or actually, before I get that, before I get to that, I yep. think it was 
2013 when I could be wrong um, there was a hurricane that was coming throughout the East Coast and no this is actually back in the 80s um, there was I think it was Hurricane Andrew was no it wasn't that one it was it was a hurricane and it was coming through DC and the guards were given um, permission to not guard the tomb during the hurricane, oh, yeah. they told the person to f off and kept guarding it even during a hurricane. Damn, that's crazy. That's that's nice. commitment right there. For sure, for sure, yeah. Man, damn, that that's mean, one of yeah. the taking a job like that. I mean. Yeah, having that bat like that's one of the highest military honors is tomb of the unknown soldier guard. Yeah. And another thing that shocks me about um, Arlington National Cemetery is uh, the Eternal Flame where JFK is buried. Mm -hmm. How does that thing stay lit when it rains? Apparently, it doesn't go oh. out. We need, to, we, need to, we need to get on that. We need to discover that. That's, yeah. that's what our scientists okay. should be researching. I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's... Like, one of those flames that doesn't go out just from rainfall. Yeah, I'm like, sure that's if something. You, it's a, there's or, some kind of compound to it that makes Or it if it's bad. one of those, it will go out, but, like, right as it stops, it comes back. Yeah, it could be one of those... Is. It sound it looks um it looks like there's two different like burners it says. I don't know if that means it's running by gas or what it is. Um when one goes out for repairs, the other one turns on. Uh, so they so they yeah. switch so it's yeah, always have, going. Have you, guys, uh, have you guys ever heard of that like the light bulb um in the firehouse that like has never gone out and it's been alive for like two hundred years? What? What firehouse? Like, in a lighthouse this, or like, what? No, like this like fire um fire department house, like there's this light bulb that's been going for years and years, and it's never got out. Look it up. It's, it's crazy. The Centennial Light Bulb? The Centennial Light Bulb, yep. Livermore, California Fire Department. It's been going for more than 100 years. And yeah, they have a literal live camera that you can look up and you can watch the light bulb. It's just always on. That's really crazy. Yeah, it's, it's nuts, actually. Man, I tell you. <laughs> um, is, is it this picture where it's literally this one light bulb in this warehouse? It's this one light bulb, bro. Yeah. Oh. Hold on, Justin. Look I at think, this picture. I think. I don't know. It's this one light bulb hanging from the middle of the warehouse. That's what it is. Yeah, dude. It's and nothing special. It's just a normal it's light bulb. It's in California. Bulb. That's what I was expecting, like, a lighthouse light or some, no, dude, something it's just, outside. It's just, it's just a regular light it's bulb. It's just a light bulb. That's, like, it's just normal light bulb, not even, like, no, like, well, it's, like, it's like one of the, I think it's like one of the first light bulbs. Yeah, it says it's been shining since 1910. Yeah, it's like That's, one of the first light bulbs. Yeah, yeah that yeah. thing is probably so hot. Curry <laughs> said Dick Jones, it says. Yeah. Hmm. But moving on. Speaking of this, lit, bro. This Sunday, there was a, one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. The most lit pay-per-view of the year. <laughs> Jake Paul took on former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley. Tyron and could man, be, baby. And man, oh I will say this. <laughs> After watching the last Jake Paul card, the only, the other fights flopped. Yeah. This one, all the undercard yeah, fights all delivered. Really good, actually, I agree with that. They're all fights are very entertaining, at least. Yeah. What did you think of before we get into all the fights? I got the card pulled up here. Um, what did you think? Because we kind of you know complain about the last one, all the different shows, and it was a four hour long pay per view because of all these different performers and these little halftime little gig and oh David da uh, Pete Davidson said some bullshit. Ha <laughs> ha. Funny. Fuck off, Pete Davidson. But anyways, <laughs> what did you think of that last one compared to this one? Because there was, like, none of that at all. This one was so much better. The Ben Askren one made me want to rip my eyeballs out. Because yeah. <laughs> I thought I... Because I paid for it. And I'm seeing all this music. I'm like, I paid for fights, not a Super Bowl halftime show <laughs> that lasts three and a half hours. Yep. And... Also, in that pay-per-view, you just had Oscar De La Hoya just high as a kite the oh. entire time, <laughs> relapsing on cocaine. I think the announcers on the last one were more funny, they're to be funny, honest. Yeah, because like... they were getting contact high from <laughs> Snoop Dogg's weed in his gym. Yeah. yeah for real. And maybe because they had that all-star cast of Snoop Dogg, you know what I mean? This was put on by Showtime Sports, which is completely different, and they yeah. have their own stack of announcers. Um, what was that dude with the glasses? Ariel um, Hawane. Yeah. What what are your what are your thoughts on him? When I saw him do like the face to face before like a week or two before the fight, I was like, dude, who the fuck is this dude? He, I didn't think he was that cool or funny or entertaining to be honest. I'll tell you what. I've been I was looking on Twitter the last couple of days. People are shitting on Ariel Hawane for doing that. Really? Like, doing that for a show that's not the UFC. People are calling him a traitor. Damn. And if you yeah. ask me, that's gonna propel his career. 
He yeah, should have yeah. nothing to be ashamed out. of. Yeah, he's got a branch out I mean, for sure. Dana White kind of treats him like shit when he when the guy's doing his job and he's <laughs> one of the best in the business of journal of sports journalism. Yeah. The guy's very underrated in every aspect. Has he made some mistakes? Yes, he has. For example, UFC UFC one ninety nine, he um revealed that Brock Lesnar would be returning to UFC two hundred before the UFC made the official announcement. Uh, that, obvious, that obviously pissed off Dana White, and he yeah. banned him from UFC events. Damn. Okay, yeah, you told me he was banned from some events and shit. Um, I think Loki, though, like, good... Uh, Loki, I think, good for him. Without knowing any of that shit, like, I feel like he's probably getting close to two times his pay running that that show, this Jake Paul pay-per-view, versus the Dana White one, just due to how the, the fighters in UFC are paid. Yeah, um, at did. least of how the rumors are, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was listening to a video, and they were basically saying that Conor McGregor is highly underpaid. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? The guy's almost a billionaire. How yeah, can you call him underpaid? <laughs> Jesus. I'm sure most of it's not for his fights, though. It's all sponsorships. It's all the stuff on his shorts. Yeah. It's, you know, his yeah, I did see, booze, yeah. you know? I did see something about, like, so I guess, like, uh, Woodley and Jake Paul, I think they got paid, like, $2 million each is what I heard. Okay. Um, That's so crazy. People on the UFC, yeah. UFC Reddit, uh, they were talking about, like, they were discussing, like, should the UFC fighters get paid closer to this? Like, that's what they were discussing, and it was interesting to see the various... I mean, obviously, that's a way bigger event, draws, like, a lot more people, you know, and it only happens, like, once yeah. a year. But, but you know, because what are UFC pages, fighting pages usually get paid for, it, like, a couple, like, 10, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, It depends. Like, yeah. you're talking to people on the undercard or on the main cards, because... I would, like, well, yeah, undercard probably even less, right? Probably, well, like... like if it's a Five fight night, less. if it's a fight night and not a pay per view, then that's going to contribute to a lower pay yeah, because sure, of that that one people aren't buying yeah, to watch. Yeah, it's not a pay per view card, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless there's big names like Anderson Silva. I know he's no longer in the UFC, mm-hmm. but even when he was on his downward spiral, just losing straight, he was still bringing in a million dollars because yeah, of dude. what he's accomplished being in the GOAT conversation. That's one person who I do think is extremely underpaid and has everything to be mad at is John Jones. Mm Because John Jones is the greatest of all time. And he, in his last four fights, he's only gotten half a million for each one. And whenever George St. Pierre fought, he would always bring in three million. Anderson Silva would earn a million, but John Jones doesn't earn a million. Yeah, that's kind of strange. It's weird how that works, though. Like, pay hierarchy. hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think we started this fight card off with uh, Tommy. Did we start with Fur- Fury? Yeah, yeah, first one. Tommy yeah, Fury, yeah Tommy TNT fight. Fury versus Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor. Um, that was. It says a catch weight, so that must mean they're not matching weight. Is that what it is or what? Yeah, catch catch weight means one fighter missed weight. Okay, so it's C in UFC. It is when it's a catch weight bout. That means somebody missed weight, and for a penalty. The opponent who made weight can say, no, I don't want to fight him because he weighed in too much. He didn't have to suffer with me. Or two, I'll right. fight him. And the person who missed weight gets 20 to 30% of his payout cut. Mm-hmm. And it goes right to his opponent. Which Damn. is why if an opponent misses weight, they'll always say, yes, I want to fight. Because they're going to get a portion of their paycheck. Right. Yeah, they'll yeah. make more money. Well, and I didn't even know that going into the fight. We knew, I mean, these dudes were unmatched beyond belief. I mean, Taylor was a little short, skinny dude, and, I mean, Tommy Fury looked like a fucking brick wall, bro, I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. Um, so the the whole storyline behind this fight is um, Anthony Taylor is Jake Paul's, like, sparring buddy and, like, trains with him and shit. Then uh, Tommy Fury's been talking a bunch of shit to Jake Paul and been trying to get a fight out of him. So yeah, once yeah. Fury definitely dominated that match, I'm surprised that we didn't see a knockout in the first, from Fur- Fury yeah. in that match. First round, but, I thought he was closing in on that knockout, but it never happened. No. Yeah, it was yep. weird. It definitely didn't expect it to go all, all, all the rounds. Yeah. Sure. It was only a four round fight. It was only yeah, four, yeah, but yeah, still. still though, I didn't really expect to go that long. Yeah, me neither. I mean, still four, three minute rounds, you know, whatever, but yeah, yeah I mean. And a catch weight fight, you know, I feel like yeah. I didn't expect it. Yeah, um, but yeah, pretty much after the fight, you know, he called Jake Paul out, and did you see uh, after both the fights yep. happened and they ran into each other and shit? Yep, I saw that. Yeah, he's got no chance, dude. Jake oh. Paul's at Jake Paul has a, is at a whole different level than Tommy Fury, bro. Tommy say, Fury's still young. He's I'm older than him. 
Yeah, we I talked about that. He's that. only 22, I would bro. Say, I would say, like, to give Jake Paul credit, I would say Jake Paul is definitely, like, he's, he is just a better fighter. Like, he's not, like he has had more training than Fury. Yeah, he, Fury definitely looked... Uh, Fury was definitely better than Taylor, but at the time, Fury did look a little sloppier to me. Yep. Jake Paul did show me in this fight, okay, he does have skill. Yeah, he does definitely yep. have skill. It, yep. it was hard to tell in his first three because yes, look, at the, look at the competition he was facing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yep. He got dad bod... Hip replaced Ben Askren, Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite looking ass, forty year old virgin looking ass too. Uh, yeah. um, then basketball player Nate Robinson who just shot three pointers for a living and didn't throw punches. Yep. But he <laughs> yeah. looks like a walking tomato can against Jake Paul. And who was the wasn't the first one against another YouTuber? Yep. Yep. Who yep. was that? Uh, Gibson. Anison. Anison Gibb. What does he do? He's a YouTuber. Yeah, what does he do on YouTube? Like, is he a YouTube uh, gamer? No, nah, he's like, like yeah, yep, yep, FIFA. Yep, mainly FIFA, I believe. No, so that's who I want Jake Paul to fight next. I want him to fight KSI and you just really settle think? it once and for all. Yeah, because sure. KSI beat up on big brother Logan. Now yeah. see, if you, yep. see if you can do it to little brother Jake. True, true. You know what? I honestly think that is a fight after Jake Paul loses his streak. As dumb as it may sound, in case I might say, oh, now you got a loss, ooh, fuck off, you know, and whatever. Um, I'm not saying yeah, Jake Paul's going to lose, but I think that is going to be, at, it's just a major yeah, headline. I think, I think, I the reason we're talking about it right yeah. now is because we know it would be a major headline. You yeah. know it would be extremely funny? What's that? So Jake Paul put Canelo Alvarez on his hit list. Yeah, what, if, can, what if Canelo Alvarez says, you know what? I just want to show this kid that there are levels. He says, I don't care. We can do an exhibition. I just want to hurt this kid and, show, and destroy his confidence. I mean, like, it, would get, it would at least give Jake something to aspire for, for sure. Listen, too. Trent, I know you love Jake Paul. Do you think he could beat Canelo There's right no now? Way. And He's obviously, crazy. I have no idea about Canelo. But He's the he is the pound best in the world. Yes, he is a true actual boxer. Um, I and well, yeah. Let's just go to this uh, Jake and Tyron fight. Um, I call him now Tyron could be because uh, he's definitely not the chosen one no more. Um, but you know, it was, uh, it, Jake Paul did get the win. Two of th- three d- judges voted for him. Split decision yeah. at the end of it. Um, you know, against can- someone like Canelo, I right now, if he would have fought him on Sunday, I don't think he would have won by any means. I don't think it would have been close. Um, and I was honestly nervous about this fight with Tyron Woodley, and we definitely saw it in there. I mean, he's been fighting for how many years? 20 years, just professionally. It doesn't matter if it's boxing or not, but he's getting knees, you know, hands to the face. You know, he can take, he can take punches, he can take a lot of punches, and he did that night too. Yeah. If you look at Woodley's last four UFC fights, he didn't get outboxed. He got out-wrestled. Exactly. Usman, Usman, his first loss where he lost his title, just smothered him on the ground and drowned him. Mm-hmm. Same thing in the Gilbert Burns fight, and Tyron didn't have any answers. The Colby Covington fight, Colby just overwhelmed him with that pressure that he has. Mm-hmm. In the Vicente Luque fight, Tyron actually looked, he had some rhythm going in the first round. He was throwing punches. He even shot a takedown, but Luque got him in a choke and finished it off. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you never, there's no fight in Tyron's career where he was ever outboxed. Sure. Except yep. maybe the Rory McDonald fight back in the day before he was champion where he lost by a decision. Mm-hmm. And other than that, the guy has dynamite in his hands. That's where I thought was really going to put Jake Paul in a very uncomfortable position. Yep. I, th- I really full-heartedly believe that this Sunday we would see the, the Tyron Woodley that knocked out Josh Koscheck with one of the deadliest right hands in UFC history. If you had a remote control for Tyron Woodley, that guy's a freak of nature. If I've, if it's one thing I noticed on Sunday and in his last four UFC fights, at the beginning he looked so gun shy. Yep. Like he didn't look like he wanted to throw, but once he landed that one, that Saint, that yep. sent Jake Paul into the fences. He's like, okay, I can, I can, I can get with this guy. Yep. He waited, he waited way too long. Yeah, I think That's that was. What the, I think. I think that was. To power up, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think that was like the fourth round. He actually got a good, a clean shot. The first hit Jake Paul has ever taken that has not been blocked. May oh, I add? That's another thing I need to say is. Jake Paul looked exhausted going into the final oh, round. Yeah. He's never had strong fight, obviously, so his endurance I, probably was just not up to par. I watched him when Tyron clinched, and he was breathing heavy. Yep. I was like, 
You know, and that's the thing that's you learn in any sport, though, too. I mean, even soccer, we're told if the ball is by you, you better hustle your ass. When you kick it to the other side to switch the field, then you jog. Then you take your break, mm-hmm. and then you jog. You know, if your class went like that, you know, yeah. I, I, God, I just sound like I'm kissing ass for this podcast, don't I, dude? Like, fuck. <laughs> I ain't trying to do that, well, but all I'm gonna, saying is, you know, I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, no, but yeah, no, but any sport, like, you know, you, you, you can try to learn how to go to the distance, but listen, until you actually have to go the distance, you don't understand, like, what it is to go the distance. What it takes you know? to get there, exactly. Yeah. And, you know... I think that this fight was actually, this win for Jake Paul was actually a negative for him. So what do you think about the actual scoring? Do you think it was a split decision in favor of Paul? Would you have said split decision in Tyron? Would you say on the fence? Do you think it's clearly Jake Paul is the winner? He had more overall strikes in every single category percentage-wise. More attempts, more landed, uh, everything. What do you... uh, what, what, yeah, what do you think? See, it's really hard to say because the way boxing fights are scored compared to MMA fights is completely different. If they were using the MMA rules, Tyron would have won unanimously because yep. one thing that isn't taken into account in boxing right, yep, scorecards is who's pushing the pace, who's on their back foot all the time. Jake Paul was not moving forward at all in the fight. He was backing up. Yep. In MMA, that wins you rounds. Yep. Mm-hmm. Out striking someone in MMA does not mean you won the round. Yep. So I agree with that. Again, from a boxing standpoint, it was probably Jake's fight. I but like was I was looking fight. at it through that scope, like Tyron's pushing the pace. Yep. And I he definitely looked like a fridge out there, dude. Like I mean, he Tyron took <laughs> all the hits. Like yeah, Jake Paul threw and connected way more punches uh, than Tyron did on his end, but. He, he ate them all, not going to lie. There was one, you know, that looked a little shaky. I mean, same with Jake, you know. But uh, we watched that replay with Jake. He tripped, didn't he? He, was, he didn't trip. He just was, was off balance. So he got hit when he was trying to maneuver his feet, and okay. that caused him to get tangled and fall into the fence. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. It was and, still a clean hit. It was still connected like you no know, other, you know. But. I was scared that because Tyron's been fighting MMA, for so long that if he had knocked Jake down, he would have like gone in for the kill. Like, yeah, right and, and then he'd be like, "Oh yeah. wait, we're boxing." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what would that be like? It's a DQ for sure. Oh um, yeah, it's gotta be. Like if Jake was fine, it would have been like a point or two. Deduction. I feel like it would be but it's if, a DQ. <laughs> that's like it's totally like not. It's not that's like the, criminal, it's dude. Not the same game. It's like, yeah. it's like you start playing baseball in the middle of a football <laughs> game. Like, Brings out a bat and just nails a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Home run, bitch. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. See, I don't think that would be good. So the reason I say this win for Jake was actually a negative yeah, is oh, because yeah. he talks all the hype saying, like, I'm a KO king. He didn't get the KO here. The re- I remember before the fight, Ariel was saying, there's not a lot of tape on you, so people don't know what to expect. Now they have tape on him. Tyron yep. did expose a couple holes in Jake's game. Yep. Now people yeah. have film on him, know his tendencies. So that's why this decision is kind of a negative. Yeah, he will definitely have to shore up his training and work harder for sure, especially if he's going to hopefully fight a real boxer in this next match, which is what I would hope to. Yeah, Um, and we haven't even brought up the aftermath. I mean, you know, they've each had their own speeches, and Tyron grabs the mic and says, hey, we're doing a rematch. Where's the rematch? And Jake Paul says, get the tat tonight, and we will. Guess what I have seen on Tyron's stories? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) I've seen a tattoo. Have you seen a tattoo? What if instead of getting I love Jake Paul, he got fuck Jake Paul? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, no fight. The deal was the deal. I mean, deal was the deal. I don't know. Yeah. I feel I, like I feel like we might see a rematch, maybe like way in the future. Though. I don't think without the tattoo, bro. That was live pay per view right after the fight. Everyone that bought that pay per view and watched that fight at the end saw it. Every it's everywhere. And do you want to know what everyone who saw that last promo thought? What do you think? Is this boxing or WWE? Yeah, that looks. <laughs> that whole interaction seemed so staged. I agree. In a way, like dude, nobody yeah, after a fight. Coming. Is like that. You know what? I agree, but at the same time, you know, I watched uh, Tyron's um, post interview, and he was like, "Dude, I honestly thought that I won that match, I like did hands too, down." Yeah. Um, he said that he admitted like he should have brought more pressure on. He uh, mentioned something about his last fight where he brought, or one of his last couple fights, he 
pressured too much and then kind of let his yep let his guard down and Mm -hmm. he he got destroyed so he mentioned you know i kind of went into it more hesitant i realized that after the third or fourth round that should probably pick it up and make it look like i'm winning but uh, i don't think either of them did bad at all see the problem with that for sure the problem with tyron saying that was he that one where he pushed the pace too much was against Vicente Luque, black belt in jiu-jitsu, uh-huh. who, when he got in, got a submission. The Tyron that used to push the pace was the same guy who knocked out Robbie Lawler, who was a striker, knocked out Josh Koscheck. So that pressure is never a good thing. If you just get caught by a jiu-jitsu person and you push that pace, they could just pull guard in a, gu- in a guillotine and yeah. get you. Yep. And let's be honest, look at Tyron Woodley. If he's, like, in your face pushing, are you not shitting your pants? <laughs> so Iron is a scary dude. Oh, man. yeah. For sure, for sure. 100%. 39 years old, and he's he showed it. Yeah. Yep. No, I I definitely think he did well, super well as well. But um, yeah, I was going to say, let's hit this Amanda Serrano match, too, because that one was, mm. like, a low-key upset. Um, we went into it, you know, and we all knew Amanda was going to win. I shouldn't say it's an upset, but no one thought that, um, that her opponent, Merc- Mercado, um, that she was going to last more than four rounds. It was yeah, a 12 yeah. round belt the fight. There. Yeah. Uh, what'd you guys, you did, what did you think about the, the woman fight there? I was surprised. Yeah. Especially like seeing the tail of the tape and stuff. Like it seemed like it should have been like a really quick fight. And then yeah. it, it's the whole distance. And I was like, damn, I mean, but no, it, it made sense watching it though too. Cause you definitely, she took it. She took it like pretty well. And you know, she was giving it back pretty good. Mercado was. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was pretty, it made sense in the end. Yeah, definitely. I remember the, uh, the betting odds were yeah, betting not even close. The tape, yeah. yeah, they were that not even close. <laughs> yeah, That's why we were like, it, okay. Wasn't it like 2,500 under, I think, or something? Yeah, like something just it ridiculous. Really um, and she was supposed to be the clear winner. But like I said, I mean, it went the whole distance. It went by decision. Yep. Um, and it was Amanda Serrano that um, kept her title, both titles, I should say, because she defended both those belts. But, um, yeah, Mercado was just another fucking tank. I mean, when she was done, her whole eye was busted up and bleeding and black and blue and all of that, but yeah, she... Yeah, no, yeah, but damn, she definitely proved herself. I mean, she definitely yeah. go, She definitely seems like she could go places as well, so... Oh, yeah. She, I think it was a good fight for both fighters, honestly. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, she didn't even stumble once, though. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe like, a little bit, but, I mean, she did, you know, she wasn't close to the mat mm-hmm. at all. Nothing like that Mercado was. What was, what um, was up with Serrano's coach yelling at that was Marcados? That the part, yeah, at the very end. At, yeah. In the interview, he was like, I thought we were going to fight a real Mexican, and she didn't show it. I'm like, what yeah. are you t- why are you, yeah. your fighter just won? Yeah. yeah she, What's the he, problem the, with you? The, the coach uh, on uh, Serrano Steel, yeah, he was really getting into it, and he just had this like pre- prejudice or something. Did they my say message, it was her brother in law yeah, or I something? Think it was her brother in law. My, message, or yeah. my yeah. message to that coach is why are you stealing your fighter's moment? Yeah, no, he That's was a big moment like, for her, and you when just she took was it from like, her. When she was giving her interview, the post interview. trying to talk into it while she was talking to it. Like, yeah. Please, bro. Yep. And then, yeah, no, the dude holding the mic pulled it away from him at the last second, went to the other fighter because that's probably who should talk at the post interview right the actual fighters and not the yeah about the camp yeah not this fucking idiot just yelling across the thing but um no i i think the whole pay-per-view was pretty fucking good i'm not gonna lie yeah, there, hasn't been any, solid. there hasn't been any reports on how many pay-per-view buys yet no yeah, yeah, it's definitely know. over a million i would say i'm sure you got some pretty good and buys. yeah i remember during the serrano fight it was in between round eight and nine, where the crowd just started standing up oh, looking yeah. in the other direction. And we're all looking at each other like, what is going on? Oh, sure about that, yeah. After, after the fight, I went on Twitter, and there was a fan fight in yep. the stands. Did it say anything about how it started or not? I don't think I saw anything either on it. No, they no. were The reason they didn't say anything on TV is because they can't. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, oh, on yeah, TV, yeah. Like, I wasn't sure about it on Twitter or something. On but, Twitter, yeah. it was just... Two people having too much to drink. Someone who has a boner for Jake Paul and one who has a boner for Tyron Woodley. No, and if it's one thing, someone who has a boner for Jake Paul is definitely someone who will swing on you. <laughs> wow. Hey, man. Yeah, what, what are, you talking, are you saying that's uh, true of Trenton here? Hey, man, things happen. <laughs> that's why we don't talk about Dave. Uh, I keep calling him Dave Peterson, but it's fine. Pete, Pete Davidson. Davidson. <laughs> Dave Peterson. Yeah. Uh, Dave Pito. But overall, Jesus very... Christ. And even afterwards, I was looking on Twitter, seeing uh, some tweets from UFC fighters, mm-hmm. 
And the one who had the biggest mouth was Dylan Danis. Oh, my. Really? It was so much that he changed his Instagram bio to Undefeated Boxer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> And obviously, Dylan Danis has had some beef with the Paul brothers. Yep. <laughs> uh, the toilet paper incident. Yep. The, the DMs about, um, what was Dylan's girlfriend's name? I don't remember. Er, no, Jake Paul FaceTiming Dylan Danis' girlfriend. <laughs> yep, no, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think that's one fight where I would actually root for Jake Paul because Dylan Danis is kind of a little... <laughs> a little He's a little much sometimes. Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. him, bro. Fuck him, bro. I don't think he would win either because he's strictly a jiu-jitsu fighter. Oh. Yeah. He doesn't... When he fight, he fights in Bellator. He hasn't fought in two years now. You think he'll get dropped pretty quick? Yes. Easily. Definitely. When Ben Askren and Jake Paul had their press conference, I remember Ben, he was saying, he's like, I know why Jake's doing this. He said, hmm, who's the easiest guy I can take? A guy who's retired, just had a hip surgery... Jake Paul interrupts him, and he's like, if I really wanted an easy fight, I would have picked Dylan Danis. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, too. And I do remember that. At first, I was like, what? Ben doesn't know how to strike. And then I watched some Dylan Danis boxing highlights. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's, he definitely punches harder than Ben, but his form is garbage. Really? Hmm. Interesting. I, even, <laughs> I don't doubt it, but... But with Ben Askren... He was posting, like, in his gym in Heartland, Wisconsin, he put up a heavy bag with Jake Paul's face on it when, yep. he, when he broke his nose. Yep. And he posted a video of him, like, rapid punching it. Jake Paul responds to it and says, tuck your chin. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. It's just like that video you showed us before uh, before today. <laughs> yeah, we might have to see what happens with that video. Kinda, <laughs> you know who Jake Paul reminds me of? Who? Colby Covington. Okay, why? Because of the trash talk. He doesn't yeah. back off. He never shows any humble moments. He's yeah. just he's just an asshole. Hey, man, boxing bull is. It's a humble moment. But it's all that still the fight, dude. I mean, bringing up that Ben Askren punching bag of Jake's face on that shit, that is promotion up the fucking asshole, bro. Um, Tyron Woodley didn't even post about the fight on his Instagram until two days prior. On, on an actual post. He posted stories and whatever, but he literally went, yeah. boop, share, post. He wouldn't put his own I words on that. it, nothing. I applaud that. For Ben? No, for Tyron Woodley. Why? Because you have a big fight coming up. Why are you on your phone 24-7? That's another thing I don't like about Jake. I'm like, dude, you're fighting. Like, why are you just doing... Are you doing this because you love the sport, or do you like it because it's getting you social media likes? I don't know. I think promotion is important. Promotion is, is for everything. You know? it's, a, it's to build a brand. But I mean, Tyre isn't really building a brand, so it makes sense. Yeah, but it's up to. But yeah. It's, but it's up to the promotion to do the promoting, like the UFC. Well, who who promoted the fight? Who promoted what fight? The Jake Paul fight. Showtime. Um, Showtime. Jake Paul did. And, and no, 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 Showtime. And then who was it uh, managed by? I have no idea, actually. Who? You don't know who it is. Dude, MVP I, Productions, bro. Mm. Guess who's the owner? Yeah. Jake Paul. That is why he's the main promoter of the whole thing. Yeah. And um, Ben Askren did just, you know, get a lot of networking in it for the last one. You know? That was and that was Triller. That wasn't Showtime. I agree. It is definitely different, you know. Um, but Yeah, Triller is just a joke. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I, 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 yeah. I have no idea. I'm, I'm just glad Ben Askren reasons. got dropped as fast yeah. as he did. But, uh... Speaking of getting dropped, Mac Jones is now announced as the QB1 for the Patriots now that Cam Newton was dropped. Yeah, we saw Cam play last year. Are you, Justin, are you still a Patriots fan without Tom Brady? Or what, what's, of course, what's or going on? I support the Pats. I support the Pats. You gotta I'm be? I'm a Patriots fan, not a Tom Brady fan. All right, facts, If I was facts, truly facts. a Tom Brady fan, I would have I would have sold my Patriots jersey and got a Bucks yeah, jersey. Yeah, the Patriots, the Patriots are all I about support, England, I support Tom Brady, but that's not the main team I watch on Sundays. Yeah. Want, we're all New England, bro. We're all New England to win. Yeah. Where so, are you from, Q-Tip? Maine doesn't even have a team. That's New England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's actually, his town is actually closer, or actually, no, Belfast, that's way up there. I think I'm closer to Foxborough than you are. Huh. Um, New England, baby. Yeah, so I will say that I was 
pretty shocked Me too. that they dropped Cam instead of like saying, I think we're gonna roll with Mac. Cam keep us around just in case. Yep. But if it's one thing I have learned as a Patriots fan, it's always trust Bill Belichick. He knows what he is doing. Yep. So <laughs> I may not fully approve, but I'm like, okay, Bill, you, <laughs> you haven't really proved me wrong yet, so let's see what you got. Yeah, and yeah. my biggest question for Cam Newton coming into this season was really, is he going to be more active in the pass game? Because how many how many touchdown passes did he throw last year? Two? Uh, yeah, four? he had single-digit <laughs> passes for touchdowns and double-digit rushing touchdowns last yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> he tied like second for most rushing touchdowns. Yeah, yep. It's really, it kind of sucks that we're never going to see the 2015 Cam Newton ever again. That is true. Because that, in my opinion, was one of the greatest MVP seasons yeah. of all time, if not the best. Yeah, I'm just as shocked as you. I mean, most of these other teams which with rookie uh, quarterbacks, I mean, we take Trey Lance in San Francisco, for example. You know, they're rolling with Jimmy G, Q-Tips mm-hmm. guy, Jimmy G, for the first Jimmy week G, at least. Baby. So. I mean, things are looking up for Q-Tip's team. I mean, we got J.K. Dobbins out for the season as well here. Q-Tip's got Gus Edwards, a new running back one there in Baltimore. Um, I I think that the Patriots should have kept Cam Newton around at least, kind of going back to that. Um, but I just knowing Cam as you know, a more outspoken person and a confident person, which I'm not saying he shouldn't be, I don't think that he would sit back upon the Patriots. I think that he would probably not show up or just quit or take some fines for some stuff. Um, I I don't think that. Uh, See, yeah, that was another. There's one that one one a thing that I took into account for why Cam wasn't St- sticking above, around above yeah. average last season. Oh, okay. Last and year? that's because when you look at Cam Newton's career. All the touchdowns he scored, the rushing accomplishments. After all those, what does he do when he scores a touchdown? He celebrates? Yeah. Yep. How can you celebrate without any fans? He's the mm. perfect example of a player who thrives off the energy of the, the crowd. The environment. That's yep. what True. keeps him going in. When there was no fans last season, I think that hurt him a Interesting. lot. Yeah. I feel like we talked about this once upon a time, too, but that is a good point that I keep forgetting about, even if we have talked about it before. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see him sticking around. Um, the other thing was, I know that he, did he miss a COVID test or didn't get it approved by the right person or something a couple weeks ago? So I don't know if that has something to do with any of it either. I feel like he was off practice for two weeks or something. He, so, got, he got COVID last season. It was a, before, yeah. before the Chiefs game, and the Patriots actually almost beat them with Brian Hoyer <laughs> as their quarterback. <laughs> yeah, you know, so hey, I mean, take the Bill Belichick playbook and uh, throw Mac Jones in there and see what happens. Uh, you used to watch some of the preseason games with the Patriots, didn't you? The last one, didn't you say? Or? I watched highlights of the Giants one, and I watched the second half of the Eagles. Okay. Patriots won three and zero in the preseason, but that means absolutely no, nothing. No, nothing, nothing. No, I didn't know if you saw anything from Mac Jones. I haven't watched a lot there of was, games, so there was a really good pass that he threw against the Giants. It was a rainbow pass, okay. landed right in the right spot. And kid, he kind of does remind me of Tom Brady in a way, because one, if you look at pictures of him, he has a dad bod like oh, yep. Tom Brady. Yep. <laughs> He's slow like Tom Brady. <laughs> Fluent throwing motion likes to stay in the pocket. Yeah, maybe that's what Bill's looking for. Just that's what for I the, said too. He's just, just like, looking for another Brady. <laughs> well, yeah. while other head coaches are at um, high school football games scouting out their next prospect, <laughs> Bill Belichick goes to the grocery store and watches the person bagging <laughs> to see their arm strength and stamina. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's, hey. Looking, he's looking for that sleeper pick, maybe the sleeper pick. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you, huh? Yeah, the secret <laughs> picks, you know. Me and Bill, Bill check are a little, a little similar that way. <laughs> oh, fuck. Are you doing any more fantasy teams this year, Justin? Nope, just no, one. Just the one? Okay, yeah. I have a eight-team draft coming up on Friday, and I have a ten-team on Saturday okay. coming what, what up. What was that for? You got one for work? I got one, one with uh, our good buddy Andrew, and then I got another one with uh, some buddies. Another one with Andrew. Yep, uh, Andrew has a league as well that I did with him last year, too, oh, with some okay. of his friends from his hometown. You know, I see, I see. 
it still haunts me that in last year's playoffs, I barely lost to Josh. Yep. And then in the third place game, my team went off. Yeah. Come yep. there. If I made it to that championship game in the same performance, my team would have stomped on you. Yeah. <laughs> Kamara. Yeah, I only got 100 points that last week. Yeah. Kamara got 56 points for me yep. in that game. Cole texted me at halftime just saying, fuck you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, I was looking back at it. So for that oh, 18 God. league, I have the second pick yeah. overall. Um, it's already set in stone. I already know where I'm at, right? Um, but, and I'm thinking I'm just going to have to go with Cook if he's still there. Otherwise, I'll take McCaffrey all day. But um, I was looking, I was curious because I was looking at the fantasy points for last year for running backs. Guess who was the number one running back for fantasy points last year? Was it Dalvin Cook? It was not Dalvin Cook. Um, try and think of Cole's team. Aaron Jones? Derrick Henry, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah, it's Derrick Henry. Um, Derrick Henry had the most fantasy points, but guess what he had? He had almost the, the lowest um, attempts for receptions. Um, Alvin Kamara last year had more catches and little dump sweep passes mm-hmm. for a ton of yards and touchdowns than the actual true running. Yep. Come, uh, Alvin Kamara finished as a top two. Actually, sorry, he was the second running back for fantasy points all of last season. Um, then it was Cooks, and then Jonathan Taylor actually was number four. Wow. That scored last season four in that running back category, um, which I thought was, I mean, interesting. I mean, Barkley was injured. McCaffrey was injured. Um, we had um, Zeke Elliott that just kind of sucked it up after Dak left, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of those guys that are being drafted top five running backs are not even in the top five at all from last year. So I got a haircut. Last week, and my barber, shout out to Victor. He gives good cuts. Go check him out on Barbers on St. Germain. And he asked me an honest question. Who do you think is going to win the NFC North? And I confidently said the Vikings. Really? I really think the Vikings will win it. Dude, they have such a tough schedule this season. I actually talked with a coworker today because I talked to him a little bit about fantasy every day, and he was like, I told him about the A-team league, and I'm picking second and whatever. And he's like, all right, what do you honestly think about the Vikings' record at the end of the year? I think 10-7. and seven. I don't think the Vikings will do that good this year. Either. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a 17-game schedule now. It's a 17-game schedule. I think I, I think they're going to run. I think maybe best they run middle of the pack. I, I Dude, you think the Vikings beat Green Bay this year? Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers' displeasures with – the front office in Green Bay is going to kill the chemistry there. You think so? I, mean, I really I mean, that's think a fair so. Point. That's a fair analysis also. Because Rodgers wants out, Devontae Adams wants out. Would not be surprised if Devontae Adams gets traded midseason. That's a pretty fair analysis there. So, I mean, it could happen, actually. We could see. That's the only reason, if there was no... If there was no trouble in paradise, then I would say Green Bay. The Lions are just the Lions. The Lions yeah. are the most pathetic franchise in <laughs> sports. Oh my God. <laughs> they, are going, they are going to be miserable, oh and their fans God. are going to be miserable for their entire lifetime. Andrew texted me today and was like, dude, I got the number one wide receiver in Detroit. And I was like, who the nice. fuck is that, dude? I don't even know anyone for Detroit. It's the some dude that's Bears. been emerging in preseason because they don't Jesus. have anyone on that fucking team. The dude. Bears? Oh, no. From a defensive standpoint, the Bears will be good, but offense, I still don't know. Ah, dude, there, there's a lot of question marks. Uh, their running back is gonna, their running back's gonna do just fine, I think. There and um, with, uh, I, be, I believe it's Robinson is their wide receiver one. There, yeah. I think they'll do just fine. <coughs> I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think definitely Green Bay's got it. I think instead of it, the chemistry going down. For those two players in Green Bay, I think it's going up. If you saw the last dance Instagram stories from Rodgers and Adams posted on the same day, the last dance like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Jesus fuck. Um, I was just reading something about Michael Jackson. That's why I have that in my head for some reason. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's just going to go up with the addition of Randall Cobb coming back, too, with that whole kind of Tom Brady play. Hey, give me uh, give me these players. Give me Gronk, you know, like kind of how Tom <laughs> Brady did. I think that is definitely something to consider. I think it's probably 50-50. It could either go up or down. Um, 
we'll kind of see what happens with that one. Um, sp speaking of my renown, that Spider-Man trailer, dude. I think I think the first one came out last week, and there's been some more stuff that came out this Is week, bro. Really but uh, wait, before go we, ahead, yeah, before yeah, yeah. we go into that, yeah, I asked my barber this. So oh, yeah. before we change it to football, or before we get out the football tech. Who wins? Who is the conference mm -hmm. finals mm -hmm. for each one? And who are the Super Bowl finalists? Really? Well, oh, Jesus, I have no idea, honestly. That's, okay. that's really hard to predict. The whole league. AFC, I'm going Tennessee Titans and Buffalo Bills, a rematch of the Music City Miracle. Oh, my God. I see a lot of potential for the Titans this year. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm super high on the Titans all around this year. Julio and, added in that offense in addition to A.J. Brown is monstrous. Yeah. Um, NFC? See, this is where it gets tough. I would probably give it to... You know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say the 49ers and the Vikings. 49ers. The 49ers out of the Cardinals? Other than the Cardinals and the 49ers the look very promising this Let's year. Let's go, Jimmy G, baby. No, Jimmy G isn't going to do anything after week three, Q Tip. <laughs> this is why you have your backup quarterback on your team. Remember that. <laughs> hey, I think he should honestly pitch up uh, Ryan Fitzmagic, bro. Because to be honest with you, dude, where is Washington on here? Oh, shit, they're in the oh, East. Oh, Washington, bro. too. I forgot about them. They're competing with the Cowboys, bro. There's nothing in the Giants' camp right now at all that's looking promising. Oh, the man. Eagles have a lot of potential. Don't think they're going to break 500 oh, this wait. year. Actually, I do take back my NFC prediction. All right, what do you got then? I got, I got Tampa Bay and Arizona. I actually, that was completely different, yeah. Yeah, right <laughs> as you said that, I completely forgot about the Cardinals. Yeah. And in the same time, I also forgot about the Bucks too. Yep, oh yeah, definitely the Bucks too, because obviously they won it last year, you know. But mm -hmm. um, Washington, I'm super high on Washington this year, too. I am, too. I they, their defense. Yes, their defense, stupid good. They have Piz Fitzpatrick as a quarterback. He's a slinger, bro. Then they can also hand it off to Gibson, who's going to crush through that line. I'm pretty sure they have a good offensive line. I feel like I remember that from last year for some reason. Um, and they've been making upgrades that all season. They got Scary Terry as that wide receiver one scary down there, bro. Dude. Yeah, dude. Fun fact, you know Ryan Fitzpatrick has never made it to the playoffs. Really? I don't doubt it because he's on a different team every season, unfortunately, yeah. you know. But anyway, so, that's football. What about so, what, AFC West? What is that? Definitely just KC and the Chargers? That's probably going to be KC. And I feel like the, the Chargers Titans? have a little bit of a chance, right? The Chargers do have a chance. The problem is they are in the, that same AFC West division yeah, with problem, Kansas yeah. City. So they have to get you know that first title in yeah, order to move on to um, you know the whole tough, thing yeah. there. Um, I, I think it is a toss-up between Kansas City and the Titans. Uh, yeah, dude. Or the East, I guess, with the Bills. That's the only thing I can think there. Um, Steelers? Are we high on the Steelers this year? Or the Browns, too. Are you high on the Steelers or the Browns? No, I'm not high on the I Steelers. I think the Browns will go over 500. I think they'll have an okay season with Chubbs and Hunt. They just run the ball and fake stuff off. Oh, we're going to give it a Chubb. Psych, bitch. Throw it over to Hunt. Isn't, run it, it isn't it really incredible that we live in a time period now? Where the Bills and the Browns are actually good. <laughs> like, it almost makes me feel like I'm in a dream. I don't know if I'd say the Browns are good. They're decent. They almost beat the Chiefs if it wasn't for that one bad call. Well, it's, I mean, hey, everyone almost beat the Chiefs. Yeah. Come on, man. Everyone has a rainy day <laughs> now and again. I yeah, don't know, the Bills, dude. though. The Bills are pretty good. Yeah. I, I do like the Bills as well. The only thing that sucks is the running back situation with Singletary and Moss. It's like, come on, just pick just pick a guy already, bro. Just pick a guy or just draft someone already, dude. Come on, just pick so, up Edo Smith on the waivers. We just dropped him. Shit. I had Singletary as one of my running backs for fantasy last year. Last year. And part of the reason I lost in the semifinals is because Singletary didn't do jack shit dude. in the game. And Josh, who I played, had Josh Allen. It came to the point where I called Josh... And I was like, can you tell your selfish-ass quarterback to hand off the ball? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's the other thing too. Josh Allen gets those rushing yards. You know, he's just uh, just kind of climbing to the top in that category as well. Yeah. Um, going back here to climbing to the top, this trailer that's came out for the <laughs> Spider-Man stuff. Q-Tip, let's get your first initial thoughts, reactions. Sure, um, has okay. there been more than one trailer? I believe uh, I've seen a couple it's different. Just the one Is it just the one? Aware. Okay. It's okay. Just the one yeah, what are your um, thoughts? I, I think it was great. I think it was a great trailer. Honestly, it's de definitely building the hype. Uh, it took forever for them to release this trailer. Yeah. People have been expecting this trailer for months and months and months. And finally, they released it. Um, you know, I definitely think they're still holding back a lot of information oh, you yeah. know, to build the hype. Um, but I, I'm really excited. You know, it looks really good. Uh, and I can't wait for it, honestly. Yeah, I think they did do well with it too. I didn't read as much of the, you know, it was supposed to come out a long time ago, but as soon as they put it out, every Facebook post, Instagram yeah, thing, I mean, I saw it everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, everyone's stories, um, even on Snapchat too. I had uh, a couple people put it on there too. Yeah, that's huge. Um, Justin, what do, you, what do you think about, like, the Green Goblin bomb and uh, Doc Ock coming back? What, what, do, you, what do we think with, the, <clears throat> with that? So, that trailer really confused me. I was... So, I actually hadn't watched the trailer until I saw a Ben Shapiro video where he was, like, reviewing it. <laughs> Perfect and, place to watch that for the and, first time. And he just, like, watched it a little bit. And when I saw Doc Ock come, yep. and as the same actor, Alfred Molina, I was yep. like... Yeah. I was like, but Spider-Man has a different actor. Why is Molina coming back? Because I thought... Yeah. I even agree with Shapiro. I was like, I thought that... The Tobey Maguire universe of Spider-Man was is a dead. Different universe. It is a different yeah, universe. so why is the same actor who was so Doc Ock been, playing? This is what I think. And, and before you answer yeah. that, like the Green Goblin Bond, does that mean Willem Dafoe is going to be? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I, I, Which I would be okay with. Willem Dafoe was I a good think Goblin. They, before you do all the explanations, they yeah. nailed this trailer, bro. I mean, they did a little bit of hint to this and the Green Goblin Bond. Yeah, That's sure. it. Now everyone's yeah. talking about that moment. That, yeah, that was sure. my biggest confusion. It was just like, I thought the Tobey Maguire era was over, so why is Alfred Molina being Doc Ock? Yeah, yeah. so basically the idea is like that they're trying to introduce the multiverse, which is like multiple universes, like multiple different Spider-Man. So they are going to bring back Doc Ock, you know, Green Goblin, and most likely Tobey Maguire as his own Spider-Man in so, his own universe. So does that mean that Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom, Tom Holland, Holland are, are all going to be... They're gonna all, supposedly all going to be together, yeah. Supposedly. Yep, yep. Un unpopular opinion, I think Andrew Garfield is the best Spider-Man. Really? I, I, I loved the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Andrew Garfield's good, but he wasn't that good. I don't was he the first one? He no, was he the was second, second one. one. Okay. I just loved the plot line of the Amazing Spider-Man's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. and so with Garfield to come back, so the idea is that they're hopefully going to build, uh, well, this is unconfirmed too, but uh, you guys know the Sinister Six, like the six villains that all like try to tie together and work together to take down Spider-Man? No. So the idea is that they're going to have a Sinister Six, I six in the film. So right now they have Doc Ock and uh, Goblin from uh, Toby's Universe. It's looking like they're going to get Gob the But Goblin is in Andrew Garfield's too. Uh, yes, but they're just gonna get their goblin from. But he it. didn't have the outfit. Yeah, though. that was the thing. Yeah, and so mm. it looks like it was get, hairy. I think they're gonna get uh, lizard and another villain from from uh, Garfield's uh, universe. Sandman, you think? No, no, that, uh, that was Tommy Maguire's. Okay, Electro, Electro, they're gonna Electro. Get Electro. Yep. And then there was and Venom. Then, too. And then there's gonna be uh, from Holland's universe. There's gonna be two villains as well. Uh, is it Mysterio? I we're not sure yet on that. No. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. But yeah, so. That's going to supposedly form the Sinister Six, and they're going to all go, like, for the three Spider-Man. That's part of, like, the film, I guess, is what's going to happen, supposedly. Interesting. Yeah, it's so, um, and we have to remember, at the end of the last movie, um, is it, it's <coughs> Mysterio, right, is the bad guy's Mysterio, name? Yeah. yeah. He reveals he, Peter's identity to the whole world. The whole world that knows who Spider-Man yeah. is. And that's what causes the beginning of the film, is, like, that Peter is dealing with the fallout, you know, everybody knows, like, who his, fa who his family is, and, yep. um, like, they're, they're, like, there's, like, cops and FBI questioning his family, and they're, like, questioning whether, like, Mysterio actually was a good guy or a bad guy. Yep. You know, they're like, are, what, those are your drones, your drones killed him, or whatever, you know, yep. like that. Yeah, so it's interesting, you know, and it makes sense. So, so it makes sense for like you know Peter to want to reset the universe, but then it causes this big issue when he messes up the spell. Yeah, and it causes a split where all the other Spider Men come in. You know, on I <clears throat> Tom Holland's Spider Man uniform, I think is the worst out of the three. Really, I think it's I great. think Toby I think it looks really good. I think Tom 
Or uh, Toby Maguire's is the best. I like the design, but it's definitely very atypical, honestly. I think I think the Sam Raimi suit, the Tom, Tom, Toby Maguire suit, is definitely like not what it, what a normal suit looked like. I think Tom Holland's is a little too more high tech. If anything, I'd say like true to definition. I think I would honestly say Maguire's or uh, Garfield's suit was actually more true. Yeah, to I like original. I like Garfield's, but it's missing the detail on the webs. Yeah, around I, the uniform. I Maguire's think, yeah, are like sticking saying. out more. Yep. That's what I liked about the original Spider Man movies was the suit looked more authentic. Mm-hmm. As with Tom Holland's look at how tiny the spider is. I don't even know if that's Spider Man or like or, or a costume, uh, a Halloween <laughs> costume of it, right? Like no, a like, like like his mom made a, made like, a homemade Spider Man costume for Halloween. Yeah, like um, a company trying to make a Spider-Man suit that's trying to avoid copyright. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that doesn't, so, that doesn't even weird... that doesn't even look like a spider. That looks like a beetle. Yeah. Well, and the weird thing too is in is in the um, t- is in the in the MCU in Tom Holland's version in the suit is the spider is actually a drone that's attached to the suit. So that's why it's so small is because it flies off the suit. It's a literal drone. Oh. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I know there's more gadgets in there. Yeah, but. it's a design choice that I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily think it looks the best, but I don't think it looks terrible. Yeah. Um. What are your? Did you see? So did you see anything? Key tip about the rumors about the red lights. The red um, lights. On Doc Ock's uh, arms. I have not. No. So um. And remind me of this because I just read something, so I could be totally off. But um, the last Doc Ock movie, there was something where his suit or his arms turned red and they control themselves yeah, yeah. correct so they speak to him and they like convince him like to do like to like, that, that's part of like what happens is like the arms start like uh, giving him suggestions and he starts listening to them and that's what like kind of turns him evil yep i yep. haven't i haven't seen that movie that long time yeah. in years. it's been a long time I mean, yeah I me too i probably haven't seen it in like yeah. seven or eight years myself yeah me neither but i just remember because i love the movies my I, favorite, i've probably seen them a hundred times though my yep. favorite toby Maguire one was where they introduced venom oh the third yeah, one the, yeah, the third one is pretty good i still say i like the second better but the third one is pretty good or when was it the first one where uh defoe died yeah that's the first one yep yeah that was spoiler great. alert yeah. spoiler alert <laughs> that movie came out in like what, 2002? Yeah. If you haven't seen yeah. that by now, you're stuck in your basement. <laughs> hey, man. Some uh, being people a nerd... Prepared, or, oh, wait, no. Some people have prepared for coronavirus 20 that. years ago, bro. They're just coming out of their caves now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it looks really hype. Yeah, and so... Uh, um, Alfred Molina, the Doc Ock uh, actor, he did an interview like a few months before. Okay. Um, in in the thing, that's when we found out that he was going to be in the movie in general, like that it was going to happen. Um, and he said apparently, like th- what we know about his character is that um, the way it works is his character was ripped like right after the end of Spider Man Two. Like so, like if, uh, basically, it looks like uh, Doc Ock dies. And he dies at the end of Spider Man Two, but yep. um, he, like I guess how it works is like his character is pulled from the end of the movie, and so like that's where like the character is like rubbing picks from. up kind of. Yeah, yeah. So like you know he's mm. he's still like you know in that like you know he's still that age, he's still like that time frame, you know stuff like that. I will say that I loved in the Amazing Spider Man series. The thing that made it special for me was. Mm-hmm. The connection that Andrew Garfield and, um, what was her name? Um, oh, uh, Gwen Stacy? Yeah, but what was the actor? Kristen Stone? Oh, or? I, oh uh, Emma Stone, right? What Emma was Stone. Yeah, it was Emma what Stone. What was, um, I loved how they incorporated, like, their love story more into the movies. Mm. Like, in the Tobey Maguire, she was there, but it didn't yeah, really, it did, didn't show as much. Yeah, it didn't really pick up until the, the second, Garfield movie. the second film, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, because yeah, in the in the Toby Maguire movies, he was basically just chasing uh, Mary Jane for mo- mo- like two thirds of the of the the movies. Yeah. And what was the bully's name? Uh, Flash. 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 Yeah. What? On YouTube, there's a video. It's movie scenes of bullies getting owned uh-huh. with uh, the Toby Maguire one. <laughs> um, him just like shooting a web without knowing what he did. Oh yeah. And he was like trying to cut it, and he like pulls a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, like a I whole full that. lunch just goes on flashes. <laughs> yep. He runs away. He has his back turned, then his spider senses say like move. He yeah, moves, and then his fist goes. 
He <laughs> comes right by him. Yeah, no, those are iconic scenes. Yeah, yep. for sure. Or like the one like where he's like, uh, like I think I think MJ has a lunch tray and she trips, and then like all the stuff goes up in the air, but then Peter gra- grabs a tray and he captures yep. it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it's yep. super funny. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. See, that was a good one because I, I I kind of forgot about it until I looked at the picture when I pulled it up of the different mm-hmm. costumes. Like, yep. what did he do? UFC or boxing? Was yeah, it mixed so martial he, arts or he something? He what was run, it? Wait, uh, say that like, again. Uh, in the first movie, in the he, first he movie, wrestling. yeah, he, re- he wrestles like in the like shitty uh, spider suit, right? Against yeah. uh, against um uh, uh oh yeah, like Randy Savage, against Randy Savage, against Randy Savage. Oh, like, yeah, he's, he plays a uh, bone saw, bone saw. That's bone right. Are you sure they didn't do that in Andrew Garfield's too? I think I remember Maybe, something I remember. of that, but that's that was another question because I remember in the first Spider-Man movie, like with Tobey Maguire it was yeah. MJ, and yeah. then in the Garfield it was. It was Gwen Stacy yeah. with Tom Holland. I hear him saying MJ again. It's, so who's... It's MJ, but it's not really... Uh, I don't think her name is actually Mary Jane. I think her name is Michelle Jones. It's just MJ. <laughs> what? It's like, it's like it's MJ is like a callback to like Mary Jane. But this character that Zendaya plays isn't actually Mary Jane. They're just... Mm, same her, initials. Her nickname is just MJ, which is like a reference, you know, a callback to Mary Jane. So who's the love interest, MJ it's, or Gwen Stacy? It's Stacey? MJ. It's MJ for for this, for Tom Holland. It would be MJ for the new one. But, but, but for, what about in the comic books? Uh, well, well, in the comic books, Peter has dated Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy. Like it's like different periods of his life. Hmm. I believe, um, I believe Mary Jane is a love interest that usually comes in his college years, um, hmm. and Gwen Stacy is a love interest in his uh, high school years in the comics, anyway. Hmm. Interesting. That would make sense. I just, with the Andrew Garfield ones, when his childhood best friend Harry Mm -hmm. became Green Goblin, it was kind of lacking the suit that Willem Dafoe had. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Whenever I see that Green Goblin suit, I'm just like, wow. Like, that's a very impressive suit. Yeah, that was iconic. The parade scene where he, like, floats up in the first song. Sea spider. (laughs) The waterfall. That was, I feel like I saw, why do I feel like I saw that in theaters? Mm -hmm. You might have. I, I think it... Did I? I, think I was three or four was then? Theater. There's no way. I kind of want to watch some Spider-Man. Oh, well, yeah. I was five or six, right? So, like, I, I think I did see it in theaters, actually, when I was a kid. Maybe. So say, I wanted to see when it... Oh, the, that's not even right. Yeah, you're right. 2002 is when the first one came out. God. That's what bugs me, though, because there's no way I remember that movie when I was, like, three. I want to say I saw it in theaters. I don't know. I definitely remember having it on VHS. I literally would watch it when I'd go to bed when I was a kid. I so... Remember. How do they, <clears throat> in these movies, determine that these are all different universes? Um, so basically, this is like the start of the multiverse, <clears throat> but um, like some of the shows, like uh, the WandaVision and Loki, they were building up to this uh, like idea. Um, but like basically, like I'm sure they'll explain like how the how it works and like what what universes are different. You know, like. It's it's a, the multiverse is a big thing in the comics. So like it's it's very explained. Like there's different Earths. Like even the even the Marvel universe is technically part of the comics uh, universe. Like it's called like Earth nineteen nine 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 or something. And like I forget what the normal Earth is uh, in in like the comics, but um, uh, it's like Earth six one six is the normal Earth. That's where like the that's where like all the normal comics take base take base. Weird. So that's how they decipher it from yeah, the Yeah, that's how lines. they like to s- determine different universes. But and then there's the Spidey verse cartoon. Then, yep, yeah, yeah, and that's a different one of its own too. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I figured um, that might have have you know like a little bit of foreshadow you know, for some of the multiverses there. But you yeah, know I what know. I just realized? So all in the two thousands, we've just seen all these Spider Man movies. There's only been like one or two Superman movies in the two thousands. I don't know if they were more prevalent in the 1990s and 80s yep. when um, um, Christopher Reeve, mm-hmm. he was probably, he was voted the best Superman yeah, actor yep. of all time. There hasn't really been many Superman movies. I do remember seeing one in theaters. It was in 2006 mm-hmm. when it was um, Brandon Ruth was Superman. Yep. Yeah. And then there was Man of Steel. Man uh, of Steel with Henry Cavill. Cavill. Yep. And that's yeah, literally yeah. Superman uh, hasn't been as popular. Um, there's a new show, Superman and Lois. That's pretty good. I, I watched that a little bit. Um, Speaking of Superman, you know who I saw today? Oh, I can't say Clown Superman. Yes. He got a new you car. See a new whip. He yeah, got a new buddy. whip. Is it a minivan? 
No, no it's <laughs> like um. We saw it that one day. It's like a SUV or oh, something, yeah, isn't it? No, oh, what like, was it? It's one of those trucks that has a back, but it has a cover over it. It like oh, connects right. with. The, I don't know That's what those what are called. Is, yeah. It's like an SUV, pretty much. But ever yeah. since I've known him, he's had three cars. Yep. <laughs> My freshman year, he was riding around in the dune bu- in the punch buggy. Yep. And then he had that truck for a while. Yep. And now he has that car. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't really suit him yet, but uh, maybe it'll grow on him. Yeah, and when I saw him, I like looked him up on YouTube, and he did like an interview yep. with somebody five five months ago. Yep. They asked him, so when did you become Superman? And he said, shortly after 9-11, and the final tipping point was when my dad died that same year. Them. I couldn't really hear much of it because... Yeah, was, that was such a was, shit video. You watched it? I watched that same thing. in the background. Yeah. Like well, he recorded with his phone or yeah. something. Yeah, because I actually want to hear what's, what St. Cloud Superman is, why he's doing it. Well, hey, we got the hear. perfect platform for it. Yeah. Oh, my God. We should never invite him here. Maybe we should go do an on-the-street interview for Ezra Records. Hey, we, we, could. we could. Yeah. I mean... Like, the I, really, I really want to hear, oh, like, what his, early. like, I want to hear, like, what his reason is for being the Superman. Yeah. I think... Well, supposedly from, he saved someone from dying, like, in the 90s or something, I want to say. I don't know. Well, he was a Marine. Yep. Well, yeah, I know he was in the service, and then, like, what, the Superman title, it comes from him, like, saving some woman in town or something. I swear to hmm. God, that's what I've heard. I didn't yeah. know that. I also heard that he suffers from PTSD. Oh, yeah, that I've heard, too. Yeah. Um, but I did read an article one time where he like gave a written statement Mm -hmm. saying a part of the reason is to protect free speech. Mm. I don't know though. Like I want to hear it through him. Like definitely an interesting character for sure. He's definitely a character on social media. I'll say that. (laughs) What? I didn't even know he had social media. Um, on St. Cloud shittiest Facebook post every now and every now and then he'll post something like a picture of him. Like, Posing, yep. doing a weird face, and he'll just be like, "Damn, I am sexy." Kind of like <laughs> Fat Bastard from Austin <laughs> yeah, Powers. Actually, he's fat really and sense. ugly, and he's just, and he's like saying, "I'm sexy." Funny. <laughs> I kind of forgot about that page. I'm still definitely on that. I think, but yeah. I, I don't see nothing. Yeah, from that I posted. Anymore. I posted something on there one time of <laughs> Saint Cloud Superman getting pulled over by the cops in front of my house. Yeah, that was uh, yeah. Like harassed uh, Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And at first, I was like. What did he do? Like, did he do something? And then, I think it was you guys who told me and sent me the vid. And I looked at Shelby's snap star. I was like, holy shit. Yep. Yep. I forgot about that. That Was that last summer? That was last summer. Oh, no. That was even that long ago. I think that it was, was like five be- months ago. I think it was at the beginning of the it summer. Was, it was... Was it April or, or May? Yeah, it was like... We were right here. I was summer. here. It was yeah, before it was you left. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I definitely got a front row seat. I had the perfect seat. But yeah, so that's the show for today. Hope everyone <laughs> enjoyed the topics. It was being a, it's another pleasure to be yep. giving out content to all our friends and fans. So with that being said, any final words, Trenton or Quentin, before we sign off? Sounds good. Peace. Yeah, make sure you guys follow us. YouTube, Spotify, we got some more fantasy football videos coming out with some live videos. So make sure you check that out as well. And we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget, pound that subscribe button because we got more content coming. Stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Peace. Peace. I like how you move it. I like how you move it. I got that new whip. Go get a new trip. I like how you move it. I like how you move it.